Hey guys, how's it going? I got a. I did the unboxing video this morning of the Sonora shirt. This is that big, nice piece I unboxed. Got a few, uh, <clears throat> a few spalls and flakes to go through here. So, let's see if I can, uh, I'd like to get a couple good spalls off of here. can just use this thing here looking for my solid copper but I don't see it there's my little one. Oh well this will work so this thing looks pretty good solid all the way through get a couple slabs out of I bet you never know you get in them though so I'm gonna clip this corner here to try to get something with an angle a little bit less than 90 degrees okay I might be able to run one right down this edge here too far in. Same spot. Pretty awesome spoil though. Went in there and rolled out. <clears throat> See, I'm working my way in to getting the platform made here <clears throat> on this edge. Nice and steep one to drive across there. Just trying to remove the cortex more than anything right now. Man, this stuff flakes nice. Try one of my Hornstone nodule hammer stones. I saved about five or six of these for for hammer stones. Looks like a 
It might have had a little crack in there, maybe. <clears throat> might have sent that first one in there weird. Better not go changing up on tools too much. This material up here looks to be a little better than what's going on back here, maybe. So I'm going to try to work this off back here. Maybe I'll try to get a spall up this way. That was just how I sent that fracture in there weird with that hammer stone. I don't think there was anything wrong with that. Gonna get me in trouble, Noodle. Everybody thinks I'm got you chained to the chair or something, slinging flint flakes at you and making you breathe silica dust. Tell them, say I, I have to be right here. I, every time you start chipping on that rock, I just gotta lay right here and let it fall on me. Oh, you didn't like that, did you? scare you yeah old noodle i got a fan blowing i got one down on the ground level too so i turn it on and i don't think anything's ain't much dust getting to her people are more worried about the cat than they are me <laughs> i guess i know better right We're concerned about Noodle. I just listened to that new song that uh, Will Harrison, November South, put out. Adeline, I think, rolling around in my head like a broken record. If you guys haven't checked out Will, give him a look. See, he's uh, on Facebook. His all his stuff's under November South. He does, he's an excellent flint napper and a musician. He got some killer songs. So I hit that pretty much straight in and it really removes the mass. This is how you get <clears throat> those almonds pieces shaped 
you know, straightened out, flattened out. You got to move your edge and get a steep enough bevel with enough meat to drive those flakes across, clear across over halfway. You know, if they're not making it over halfway, you're not, you're not thinning. I just had someone email me and I have people ask me all the time. That's one of the biggest problems is getting, getting pieces thin, obviously. But you just got to move, you got to roll your edge down and get steep enough uh, bevel on it to hit and drive, whether it be with a billet or under the leg percussion indirect or what. You got to be able to drive and get that inward force to get, get them all the way across there. nap the more you'll get familiar with the edges you need for the different tools because they're not all the same that's that's for sure Let's have a look. This thing is really thick. Need to drive some big old thinning flakes off here. So I want a real heavy platform, nice and steep, so I can drive drive across there. I'm gonna support, use surface support and back edge support. I'm gonna drive it into the back of my hand strike in the world but okay now I feel like feel like I can get one across the bottom here this is actually a really good thinning technique to go back and forth maybe I can demonstrate it Kind of sets you up every time to remove. I got a little low or high. Let's remove the next flake. It kind of forced that one. It wanted to pop out there, and I had my support in it, so it rattled its way through on through there. Whichever end you, you pick for your tip, um, opposite your base, there's always a good good area to start in on. Like if you got a an oval shaped preform, you know if you if you're planning on using one end for your base, you can start in. This is always excess material up here on the shoulders area, so that's always a good place to start in and get started with your thinning. So when I'm starting at the tip here, I'm setting the stage to come down through here. I'm isolating this next area of mass right here. You'll notice I take a flake at the, at the tip a lot of times, very first thing. That'll set you up to, to, to work your way right on down the edge. 
you can take a little flake and a big flake and a little flake or however you however you want to do it but i'm trying to remove quite a bit of mass so i want steep angles or steep edges i want to hit well above the edge with inward force some mass now. This thing looks like it might want to be a turkey tail. get one side smoothed out pretty good like it you like the contours of it you can switch to another side and start flattening it out need to remove a lot more right in here looks like or I need to remove it down here and get a couple both ways If we look at where our tip and our base is and draw a straight line, we can remove everything else beyond that. Or we can move our tip to one side or the other. If one side is really flat, you don't want to chase chase symmetry in your body and the the correct body and it'll end up losing too much uh, material. That's one of my problems. on all right let's see if I can get this tuned up here a little bit there we go that'll flatten her out So one of my friends, or one of my, uh, I don't know if he's a subscriber or one of my viewers, I guess I should say, Daniel, I sure appreciate you uh, hooking me up with that information. He just uh, emailed me and gave me some coordinates to Hornstone. And uh, it's the Indiana Hornstone, it's not the Kentucky. The only thing I've got so far is the Kentucky stuff. This is the stuff that's uh, called YN dot, YN dot Church, Indiana Hornstone. So I 
am very anxious to check that out. Make a nice Snyder's point. Edge keeps giving away. Some cracks in there is why. Oh man. Something in there messed me up. Yeah, I'll probably end up doing a turkey tail out of this. I just wanted to film doing a biface out of it. Check this material out. This is Sonora Chert, again, from uh, Karina Blevins. Really nice stuff. But, yeah, if you're having trouble, guys, getting them turtle backs off there, the easiest thing to do, the only thing to do, really, is you got to raise your edge up and get it up above the center line with some short flakes or pressure flakes or whatever it might be. But you gotta get it and come in from, like I was saying, if the base is down here, you can start up here and sacrifice the material just to work your way up a little bit to get up high enough to work those turtle backs off there. But you gotta get your, your edge nice and steep and you gotta drive them across there whether it be on your lap, with indirect, try to use back edge support and load pressure if you're trying to get them to run and, and use surface support as well with soft leather or your fingers. But in order to get the, the most amount of inward force, I've found that freehand with a billet is kind of the way to go. And you just want a nice arcing swing and Drive them flakes across there. I'll really drive them. And that'll, that'll get rid of those humps for you. There's turtle backs. And you want to do this early in the process if you can. Um, you know, so you're not uh, boxing yourself in at the end and you end up with a nice big thick piece. <clears throat> and you might get it thinned out to what looks good and then all of a sudden you bring your edges in another half inch and it's, it's another almond. It's fat in the middle again. So in that case, you got to drop your edge or, you know, get that steep bubble on there again and drive them flakes across there. Got to get them over halfway. Preferably three quarters. This piece has got a crack in the center of it. I can see it showing through on both sides here.
unless it's healed. I don't run into too many of them that are healed with this stuff. Yeah. So, anyways, I hope that helped, guys. And uh, I appreciate that information. I really do. And uh, Daniel and and uh, let's see what else. I guess that's it. I just wanted to <clears throat> to film making a biface out of that shirt so you guys could see Karina's stuff. She doesn't have um, material all the time, but when she does, it's really nice. Really nice stuff. So check her out. And I still got plenty of uh, hornstone uh, spalls and uh, Fort Payne spalls, medium sized spalls and small large flakes and small spalls and most of it all i don't have many uh nodules left so everything's spalled out i had to process it down a little farther some of that fort pain guys i apologize it has some cracks in it and stuff it's, it's, i know it's, some of it's going to come apart on y'all and i should have processed it down a little further before i sold it and and i didn't but i haven't had any complaints so far so so far so good but if you guys run into some issues or too many issues let me know and, but uh and also i sent a box of this uh, hornstone and fort Payne to my good friend marty and he was kind enough to make me a video showing me uh, breaking it down and how to test it the best way to to find the cracks and seams and stuff in it and basically said look man you gotta break this stuff down out in the field It'll save your back and it'll save all that waste when you get home, and I, which I totally agree with him. And he said also that I'm probably overcharging for that Fort Payne. Um, so I'll probably drop the price on that stuff at least a dollar a pound. Um, and well, I've got it all spalled out now, so it's not totally unreasonable to get the money I'm asking, but I think I'll still drop a drop at a dollar a pound to four dollars a pound. And um, yeah, other than that, so you guys can thank Marty, my friend Marty, for for the price drop. And I told him, I said, man, my back appreciates it, and I'm sure my customers <laughs> are gonna appreciate it too. So. You know, I think some of the stuff, there's definitely a few things made it out of here with, probably he's got some cracks and stuff you're going to run into, but it's not, not anything to be too concerned about. So, I want to stay on the up and up with everybody, and I don't want to be that guy that's overcharging for his rock and get it, and it's got cracks and crumbles apart and all that stuff. Because I've been there and done that on the other end of it, and I don't like it. So I'm sure you guys don't either. So, okie doke. That's it. That's all I got. I'll catch you all in the next one.